By a golden estuary in West Wales lies the community of Llanelli. It has a familiar story to tell. It once had a proud industrial past, but fell on hard times. Now its people are struggling to survive a recession. It's a tale you know from the headlines, but we'll show the human stories behind them. Some are having their lives ruined by the downturn. We've seen tough times before, there's been downturns before, but nothing quite like this. This is just like a bombshell. You know, I told my wife, and my, uh, she just lost her job as well. So, in shit street. Others are striving to forge a brighter, more prosperous future. During the next six month period, the runway should be completed and that'll make this airport in the same size as London City Airport. Some are living the good life, whilst others are living no life at all. The drugs culture, it, it affects everybody in different ways, but it has devastated our family. You know, I've, I've lost two of my boys now. Two of them, needlessly. There are people of opposites, of hope and despair, success and failure. And these are their stories. <laughs> Dotted around Llanelli are just a handful of monuments to the town's great industrial past. Even rarer than these relics are working factories. Spencer Davis Engineering is one of the few that still continue the area's manufacturing traditions. Just. Owen Davis is the managing director of this small family-run firm. Since the 1970s, they've been making large-scale steel products to order. They currently employ 25 workers. Paul is um, the uh, longest serving employee, the first person my father employed, 30 five years ago? 33. 33. Cheap keep us. Um, and obviously, seen me grow up as a kid, pestering him when I was uh, five, six years old, starting with your man, and now he's still here. Done various roles in the company. As the credit crunch began to bite, orders dried up, and Owain has had to lay off a third of his workforce. Um, we just come into the production office. Martin produces. Um, a shared deal, and unfortunately, you can see from the board, it's fairly empty. There's not an awful lot going on here, unfortunately, at the moment. Normally, through busy periods, these production shared deals are two, sometimes three pages per department, and the board is full. We've seen tough times before. There's been downturns before, but nothing quite like this. And uh, the speed that it hit us with, you know, there was no time for any preparation. I mean, we've made 11 redundancies. What were we supposed to do? <laughs> keep 11 men here with nothing to do and keep paying them, we just can't do it. At the height of its industrial past, Llanelli was the biggest tin plate manufacturer in the world. Millions of Llanelli's tin cans found their way to all corners of the earth. The great coal, copper, steel and tin plate industries employed half of Llanelli's population. In the 1950s, however, the whole industrial sector declined, leaving few survivors. Okay. Owen recently took on the daily management of the firm from his father, Spencer Davis. Spencer set up the firm 35 years ago, but with a recession, he's seeing the company he founded and the industrial heritage he grew up with on the edge of an abyss. There's very little industry left. We had the car industry, the steelworks, the tin works. We haven't got any of that. Uh, it's all going abroad. You know, only yesterday, a supplier of ours that uh, has been around for over 130 years uh, as appointed administrator. You know, we've been around for 35 years. So what chance have we got? Um, you know, so you see good times and bad times, and you try and strive through the bad times. The reality is, can we survive? 
Owain worked his way up from the factory floor and despite the recession is still committed to traditional apprenticeships. If the firm closes, it would be like losing a family. I just introduced you to the boys now as uh, our newest recruit and uh, our youngest apprentice. Yeah. Enjoying it, yeah? Yeah, it's good fun. It's... You better not say anything else now, I tell you now. <laughs> it's, it's a great different. place to work, the pay yeah. is excellent. Fantastic, can't go wrong with it. Excellent, that's where we went. Spencer Davies is an example of a bigger question that's now facing Llanelli. Is there still a place for the old traditions and pride in manufacturing? Or does the future of the area lie elsewhere? With its industrial past, Llanelli would be like any other South Wales town, but for one thing, it sits on a stretch of spectacular coastline. And where there's water, there's leisure, tourism, and visitors with money to spend. And in Llanelli's town hall, they're planning to capitalize on it. Our proposals for our building here is that we use sort of metal sheets on the facade, which will throw back to the history of the town. It has an element of theatre and the choice of colours that are there. Developing and generating an income from a new leisure and tourism industry, they believe, is where Llanelli's future lies. So the, the whole idea is to get a huge increase in footfall, is to get a lot more people into the town. And if we and it's the leader of Carmarthenshire Council, Meryl Gravel, that's been the driving force behind this new vision for Llanelli. And 20 years in politics has given Meryl all the skills to manage the fallout as the council bring about change. <coughs> My job really is to be a big visionary, is to have a vision of the county and how I can make the county a much better place for people to live and work and play and have leisure time in it. Um, that's basically it, but it's not easy. Part of the council's grand development plan is a new out-of-town retail park offering convenient shopping. But it's all come at a cost. Like many places in Wales, the traditional high street is suffering and many of its retailers have gone bust. A few miles out of town is a business central to the council's expansion plans, Pembrey Airport. If Llanelli's future depends on bringing in more tourists, then this is where it could happen. And everyone's hopes rest on the man in charge, Captain Winston Thomas. Llanelli born and bred, Winston worked as an airline pilot. Then, in the US, he made his fortune in the aviation electronics industry before returning home. Run with the help of volunteers, the airport makes money refueling small aircraft. The only thing that I want to do after spending 26 years in America is to come back home and do something for the county of Carmarthenshire. And I thought, well, um, I haven't been in America so long. The first thing the Americans will say when they move into an area, where's the nearest airport? And if there isn't an airport there, they'll go to somewhere else. So I thought if we had an airport here, then we would genuinely be able to create in wood investment. Winston leased Pembrey from the council 14 years ago. He then sunk his own money into developing the airport and fulfilling his dream of launching Llanelli's very own international airline. This is the arrivals departure lounge. Um, the passengers come in here and then they go into the customs area. Um, Winston has slowly amassed all the paraphernalia needed for when or if it finally happens. This is the flight operations room here for the airline. And it's got all the um, uniforms for, this, for the uh, staff. The staff are already waiting to actually, uh, you know, to be called in. But they're not today? No, not today, no. Uh, where's the aircraft? They, they're in Scotland at the moment. You know, the two aircraft that are assigned for us, they're in Scotland ready for delivery. So have you bought them yet? No, we haven't bought them yet. Despite slow progress, Winston's confident that his airline will soon be open for business. So this year, hopefully? Oh, definitely, yeah. I would think around about August time frame we should be able to start the airline up. But the council's not so sure. 
With such little progress, they've ordered a review into the viability of the airport and the way it's managed. Elsewhere, the Council's plans for the future are already taking shape. This area by Llanelli's shoreline was once the town's industrial heartland. Around 60 years ago, tin plate, steel and copper work stood side by side in the biggest concentration of factories in the area. It's been bulldozed to make way for golf courses, marinas and coastal parks. From these new businesses, the council aims to create a fresh look for the town. And some are buying into it. Tony Phillips is getting a helping hand from his brother as he moves into a brand new housing estate development overlooking Machanis Golf Course. After a career abroad in the oil industry, he and his wife are returning to their Welsh roots. <laughs> I think this is beautiful, actually. Uh, uh, yeah, I love what they've done. It is. Uh, it's good to see that we are reclaiming the best bit, the coast, the shore, the foreshore, instead of all the steelworks and heavy industry that uh, that had it for all that time, really. So this is a really good step in the right direction, I think. It's fantastic. It's really beautiful. It really is. And ever changing. Yes. Yeah. I think we saw it for the first time the other night with the tide falling, and what a difference. You get the occasional aircraft going overhead. Uh, other than that, uh, it's, uh, it's like the grave here most of the time. There's a very different side to Llanelli, one the council wouldn't wish to promote. The Five T's flats on the west side of town. Boys, be sociable outside, please out. I've just spoken to Kevin and in the past, the traditional steel and tin industry created employment, careers and apprenticeships. Now, like many towns in Wales, Llanelli struggles with bored youth looking for things to do. Guys, out of the road, please. But it's a short step from rowdiness to something more serious. Yeah. Got a drug addict going there tonight. Top, bottom left there, is it? Yeah. They're not there now, are they? Well, they've been there for the last hour and a half. Llanelli has a long-term drug problem, and for the police, it's a tough nut to crack. In this tight-knit community, yeah. drug deals happen behind closed doors rather than on the streets. There is drug, drug activity, there's no getting away from that within this area and in Clearly in general, so, uh, you know, we deal with what we, uh, what we can. Hopefully uh, get uh, warrants under the Misuse of Drugs Act and um, bash down doors and hopefully get some results. Okay. As the police are well aware, just bashing down doors won't be enough to solve the problem. Drug abuse in certain parts of Llanelli has become an epidemic. Last year in Llanelli, drugs claimed a life every month. It's a blight tearing lives and families apart. Llanelli Crematorium. Neil and Cheryl Vaughan are preparing for the funeral of their son, Lee, who died of a heroin overdose, aged 24. I'm his stepmother. Um, sadly, his mother passed away last year. But, uh, yeah, he was one of my children. Always will be. And it is, it is sad. And it's a worry. I have a strong Christian faith myself, right? And to me... He's in heaven, and that is, that's where he's at at the moment, which is, to me, a far greater place than here. So further down the line, I don't know how I'll be tried or whatever, but at the moment I'm strong with it, and like I say, I wish he was here now, but obviously he's moved on to a better place, like. 
But there's an organisation in town that's trying to tackle the roots of Llanelli's drug problem, Choose Life Drop-In Centre. Set up ten years ago, Choose Life is a safe haven for drug and alcohol abusers. Here there's a chance for a free lunch and, more importantly, some well-founded advice on how to turn their lives around. And no one knows better about their problems than founder Alan Andrews. If you go with no alcohol, because I can't no, of course go not. with no, you. No, no, yeah, and no jumping in the cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, a former drug addict, has spent many years in prison. He's got a special insight into Llanelli's unique drug problems. Llanelli's like any other town, right? But it has a problem in the sense that everyone knows everyone. How easy is it to score? That's the problem we've got that most main cities haven't got. I myself started taking drugs back in 1984. That was just after Duport Steelworks closed. Lots of people I know you can trace back. That was the year that they started taking drugs. There's a saying in the drug world, where there's dope, there's hope. I'd reverse that and say where there's no hope, dope and other drugs come in and take his place. Alan's interrupted by a passerby with a different view. But if they're not prepared to take it on their own back and give it up, then at the end of the day, fuck up, let them die. Oh, happy days. Right then. <laughs> You know, if, if, if you wake up in the morning with no structure around your day, you don't have to get up for work or anything, at the end of the day, you're bound to get depressed. People have this tendency to think that, you know, our drug users, they choose to be drug users, and yes, they choose to take drugs, but most of the time they take it because they can't deal with what's going on inside. These days, when someone comes up to me and says, have you heard about so-and-so? The normal thing in life would be to think, oh, are they pregnant? Are they getting married? These days, I instantly wince and think they're going to tell me that they're dead because there are so many people dying from drugs. At Spencer Davis Engineering, Managing Director Owain Davis is about to update a worried workforce. Attention please, can everybody congregate in the uh, usual area for a team get-together uh, in a couple of minutes please? In the last couple of weeks the outlook hasn't improved and Owain has had to lay off another six workers. But recently, there's been a small trickle of orders, and Owen's hoping to capitalise on this with a speech designed to boost morale. Did that come through in the town, Oi? No. Tell everybody we're having a quick get together now. No. Didn't come through. No. Oh, shit. Bloody fuse has gone in the town, Oi. It's a good start. Could you get it? Just grab everybody quickly. Is there anything you want to say specifically? Just an update on the order situation, really. Um, Nothing else, is there? Latest with Guardian Pumps latest with our customers yeah, okay. and we're just like, keeping going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everyone's spirits up really. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been a good week this week actually. Uh, a lot more optimistic than uh, it's been. The only one sweat that I've got is we've lost some orders to a competitor. We don't know why so we've just got to hold our own and keep our prices and pencils sharp. But uh, I think you know things are starting to look better for us anyway. The usual cash flow problems. All right. Cheers, boys. Thank you very much. Yeah, nothing else, man, there? No. Okay. Good. Well, it sounds better than the last one. You know, the last time, I think, six boys were laid off. The last meeting we had, so... Uh... Any news I got, the extra work is good news, I think. So uh... I say it's the best news we've had in the last three months. You know, one thing is looking better than it has, you know, so we've all been doom and gloom, innit? At the end of the day, these boys want to come to work and go home with a pay packet at the end of the week. And if last we haven't got we... work, we've got to leave people last off. Last time we had the boys together, we don't know what we're going to do for the next four weeks. No. You know, 
Our, our order book is, st is still isn't brilliant, but at least we've got work to keep us going for another, you know, few weeks. And that's how it is at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. It's frustrating as hell. Over the last four months, Owain has been forced to lose a third of his workforce. If things don't improve, he'll have to close the factory. It's the funeral of Lee Vaughan, who died of a drug overdose. As a friend of the family, Alan Andrews from Choose Life has been asked to present the eulogy. Drugs are taking victim after victim, and funerals like Lee, it was probably one of the hardest days of my life. What Neil, Cheryl, Jamie and Mike and uh, the other key run that went through, surrendous, but it's becoming ever increasing. I find this really hard, right? sorry. Lee, you meant so much to me, words can't even explain how much, neither can numbers. You always had a smile on your face, and every time you were with me, you used to brighten me up. I'm going to miss you so much, and so is everyone else. It's one of the meanest ways to die, because there was no need. It's almost they died through default. Died early, young men who were, who were probably, although by age they were in the prime of their life, they've never known life. They've never had that life that they were meant to have because drugs have robbed it from them. I know you're not, and that's what hurts me the most. God took you when I needed you the most, but I know you're in a better place, and that's where you'll stay, heaven and my heart. Nothing's going to be the same without you. I hope you're happy, and don't be sad, because whatever made you happy makes me happy. Love you, Lee, Kira. At Pembrey, Winston's plans to expand the airport are still not progressing, and the council's report on its future is almost complete. Winston claims to have poured millions of his own money into the airport, but feels the council are not doing their bit. He believes they should have acted years ago to remove a tall boundary fence at the end of the runway that's stopping larger aircraft from landing. That's got to be seen to, and the sooner the better, because we will we're losing a huge amount of revenues here at the airport. Uh, over the eight-year period, this is amounted to about five and a half million pounds of lost revenue. So um, that's um, something that we don't want to t tolerate very long, you know. Uh. Here's the scanners of the main findings, some of which are going to be contentious. Um, in a local community uh, centre, the uh, council leader, Meryl Gravel, is hearing the initial findings of the council's review from a business consultant, Robin Camish. It is very, very timely to see how we can expand this oh, agree with you. Uh, into something far more commercial yeah. and valuable to the people. It will take uh, 1.5 to 1.7 million to put the infrastructure in um, to take it forward for the next 15 to 20 years. Winston's great expertise is on the technical side of aircraft. I think as a, as a fundamental, you, you've got a strategy decision to take on whether you leave the current operator in place, who's very technical, or um, replace him with somebody that as you as a landlord think is more appropriate to actually sort of expand and develop the site. It's 12 years of making zero profit, um, so from a valuation point of view, anybody coming in to buy it, you'd actually value this at zero. Mm. The next step for the council is to commission a full-scale business plan. But will that plan include Winston? We are beginning to get quite frustrated and we need to move things forward. So I think the next move now is to see what this business plan says and then um, I will personally take advice from senior officers about how we take it forward. It's been three months since his son's funeral and Neil Vaughan is on his way to choose life with his 23-year-old son Jamie, who's also a drug user. After the death of his eldest son, Neil's keen to help Jamie break his addiction. Yeah, well, you should go tonight. 
Uh, you should make yourself go. No, I'm not going to. Right? I've had enough football for one week, right? Mm -hmm. you know, Monday. Neil's hoping that Alan and his staff at Choose Life will keep a close eye on Jamie. Oh, young boy, you are, man. I'm 23 now, boy. Hi, boy. Yeah. Are you playing, Jim? No. Wait, I'll come and watch you. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Jim. Yeah, I'll come and watch you then if you're yeah, going to play. Uh, I might be embarrassed, mate, because I'm playing. Yeah, yeah. shut up. <laughs> I'm that. Part of the Choose Life approach is to encourage substance abusers to keep their minds off drugs by getting involved in leisure activities like football. Explain it though. Why yeah, but who was I playing for them? Why, why am I playing for I'm them? I'm so good, they don't ask me to play for them. <laughs> Alan's great, he's doing a great job. Like I said, I've known Alan since we were kids, like since 10, 11 years of age. And I know where he's come from, yeah, from how bad he was to how good he is now, like, and he's actually, you know, putting his experience of life to benefit others, to, you know, to hopefully protect them and save them, innit? No, I'm only playing with them, cos I don't want to... Anyway, that's not the B side, because it's the first, they're all the first. And the only reason I'm playing for them is because I didn't turn up the train. Yeah. Neil's recently had a tattoo, a tribute to Lee, the son he lost to heroin. Wow. Look at that food. What's it say? Only God will go. judge me now. Who done that for you, Neil? Chris Govia. It isn't finished yet, because right. I got the other one. Next time, with a brand new race course opening near Llanelli and people eager to fly in, can Winston impress the council yes. by drumming up new business? Yes, uh, any uh, news of any aircraft coming in over? Hoping you might tell us. No, a negative this end. Will Neil and Alan be able to keep Jamie on track at Choose Life? Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you the truth when I say like, I want to come off and I am sticking to it. We can support Neil in whatever kind of support he needs, but at the end of the day, it's the choices that Jamie makes. And is it really the end of the road for Spencer Davis Engineering? I've got no job. Simple as that. Darren, ready for you next.